how to adjust declination on a base plate compass. Coming up. Welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I am super stoked to see you. So I got a couple base plate compasses here. Uh, one is a Silva, and the other one is a Brunton, uh, which which is broken right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm still gonna use it to show you how uh, th theirs works as well. So I wanted to walk through just a, a real quick and short video on how to adjust for declination on a base plate compass. Now, being able to do that on a base plate compass is, is one of the probably awesomest features uh, on, on these things as, as opposed to using like a lensatic compass. Lensatic compass, you can't account for a declination on a base plate compass on some good ones. On good ones, you can. And that's one of the things that I really love about these two uh, particular compasses that I have. There are plenty out there that are cheap, that are that you just garbage and you can't do it uh, on. Hey team, gonna take a short pause and remind you to check down in the description below for a link to any of the gear seen in the video, as well as over a dozen lists on my Amazon Influencer page to help you organize and harden your kit. And if you're looking for a deeper connection, including one-on-one -on -one instruction, you'll also find a link to my Patreon page featuring six levels of membership so you can select the right perk, value, and support that you're looking for. Back to the content. And so I'm gonna recommend if you do go out and uh, go with a base plate, make sure you get one where you can adjust it. Now, the, the, the caution, the warning sign, ah, 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 is uh, you gotta make sure that you pay attention that if you move to another area that you change your declination again and make sure that if, if you have to use a tool that you have that tool with you because declination is gonna be different everywhere that you go. Uh, if I, even if I just travel 30 miles in any direction from here, the declination is going to be a little bit different. It may not be enough to, to really matter at the end of the day, but it can be. Even on a section of land like the Yakima Training Center has uh, two declinations depending on where you're at in, in the training center. And of course, if you go from you know upper left coast what to upper right coast what uh, it's going to be the polar opposite. You know where I'm about 15 and a half degrees right now in the upper left coast, the upper right coast is probably, you know, 12 degrees, but it's the exact opposite. So it's like 15 and 12, that's 27 degrees difference. Now that, that is huge. So what is declination real quick? Uh, we'll define this real quick and then I'll show you how to, to make the adjustments on both the Brunton and the Silver because it's two different things, two different ways that you can adjust these things. So declination, you know, as we look down here, we, we see a declination diagram. And on this particular one of the Olympic National Forest, uh, where of course we've been at here uh, lately, uh, doing some overnighters and, and some different things, uh, we can see that it's 18 and a half degrees, 18 and a half degrees between, and that's noting between uh, true north and magnetic north. And, that, and that's what we're, uh, um, we're looking at here and of course this is back in 2003 so things have changed since then and if I wanted the most up-to-date declination for the particular area then I could go to Noah's website and I'll leave a link to that down in the uh, description below so that you can get the most accurate up-to-date stuff because it changes all the time uh, so that, that's what it is here and for where I'm at right now uh, today uh, I'm tracking it's 15 and a half degrees so that's what declination is is the difference between between true north and magnetic north. True north is where Santa Claus lives, right? Candy cane, ho, ho, ho. Magnetic north is where your compass needle wants to point to. And so the difference between these things, and it, the, you know, of course the magnetic pole is moving right now, it's moving pretty fast towards uh, Russia. Uh, and the difference between that is gonna cause some variation. Why do we not use magnetic north uh, when we're making our maps? And what, the reason is just because of that, because it's always changing. Whereas that North Pole, where where, can, where Santa Claus lives, that candy cane is always going to be there. So that's why the UTM uses this right in flat Earth model. Right. So on a Brunton base plate compass, I, and I think most of them uh, are work the exact same way. Of course, my, mine broke. I, I I slammed something down, and you, you can see where it broke there. Right. Broke that. Uh, but I think that most of these things work pretty much the same way. 
uh, and they're, they're tool less, right? You don't need a tool uh, to adjust. And that's one of the cool things about this uh, compared to, to the silver where, where you do need a tool that's not included. Uh, but this one's super easy. So all you do, I, no, I can actually take this out because I can still adjust it, is you just, you just push right here like this, right? Push down and then you can adjust it to east or west. And then once you have that set, man, it's done. You, you never have to add or subtract based off of what the declination is. Right, so the Silva uh, compass is brand new to me. I, I picked this up uh, down some logging store down in Madison, I think. Uh, but, but I like this thing. And this one, you do need a tool. And the tool that you need to use to adjust it with uh, it doesn't cost hardly anything, but all, un unless you already have one. Just a little uh, flathead screwdriver is all you need, right? Just a flathead screwdriver. This particular one, man, I just picked up yesterday uh, at uh, Fred Meyer. I, if my memory starts, man, I think it's all this smoke. Uh, so, I probably just dated this video. <laughs> um, so, this one is super easy to do as well, and all you do is you just take, right, so all we're going to do to set this uh, to 18 and a half degrees here uh, for this particular map is we're just going to swing this over to 10 degrees, we're just, right, we're just putting the doghouse at 10 degrees, and then we come over, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, that's about 18 degrees right there. And what you can do, uh, if you need to, you can take a piece of paper and you can run it underneath so that you can make sure that, uh, you know, you're getting about as close as you can. So it's gonna be almost to 20 degrees here, right? Which I think that's probably about right. And boom, now that compass is preset for this area in the Olympic National Forest. All right, so why do we want to do this is because again, you know, the difference can be all the difference in the world. And after I have a compass preset, then everything that I do, every uh, azimuth or bearing that I pull from this is going to be accounting for that declination. So I'm not pulling a grid azimuth. I'm pulling a magnetic azimuth. My needle is always going to point towards magnetic north. But now that I have this preset, boom, everything that I pull on this, I don't have to do any math, any conversions at all. It's automatically doing all the work for me. So that's one of the biggest benefits on this. Hey, just a quick video on, on how to do this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on some future content. We will keep this conversation rolling. Leave some comments down below. And, uh, and we'll keep yakking about this thing, and uh, we'll, we'll keep rocking at it. Man, I appreciate it, you guys. Hope you all are staying safe out there. And until then, you stay stoked.